So let's the setup here is suppose that we have an isomorphism from G to H. Then G is cyclic if and only if and only if H is cyclic. Let's see. Uh, right. So so the previous proof demonstrates that G is cyclic. So what really happens? Uh, I should run through this proof again just in case you didn't see that video. Um, if G is cyclic, uh, then G is equal to G, which equals to the set of all G to the n such that n is an integer, like so. Well, then um, what we're using here is phi of G to the n equals phi of G to the n. So because, uh, so I can say let h belong to h, uh, since v is onto, there is an x belongs to g with v of x equal h. Since g is cyclic, uh, x equals g to the m for some m. Then h equals phi of x equals phi of g to the m equals phi of g to the m. <coughs> Since this was generic element of h, so h equals the subgroup generated by uh, phi of g. So in other words, h is cyclic. That's really the proof. So, but then uh, we also have that the inverse is an isomorphism, so you can play the same result with uh, h. That gives you the result. All right, thanks.